These boys don't simply announce things or make up a wish list of the future and send it up the chimney to Santa Claus. When they come up with an idea, they implement it. I follow the United Nations Department of Statistics as they announce every single year the sperm count of the Western male, which has been falling drastically since the 1950s. They say that it's down by about 75-85%. Now, when something like that's happened across the whole of Europe and the Americas in 50 years, and they suddenly started noticing it 50 years ago, sudden onset, and there's no crisis made about it. There's no, there's no uh, comeback after announcing the statistics. They just tell you the, the cold, hard statistics and go off to the next statistic on some other topic. That means it's part of the agenda. Otherwise, it would be a crisis. If this wasn't planned and part of the agenda, believe you me, it would be a crisis if they didn't authorize it. And now they tell us that the average American has less than 20% sperm and only about 15% is motile. That's not a coincidence. What happened in the 1950s to start out this ball rolling? In the 1950s, they suddenly put all the, the known female uh, synthetic estrogens into food supply. They put it in baby foods. Procter and Gamble were the first one to admit to after investigation 40 years later that they were using a rinse to supposedly sterilize the baby bottles and it contained bisphenol A. An odd thing to rinse baby bottles with when bisphenol A is the very thing that attacks young male children at that age and stops the testes from developing properly. You go back even further into more detail and you find out that the cosmetic industry were using insufflatants. Insufflation is a technique where certain carriers are put into the creams themselves and these creams then absorb into the skin carrying other chemicals with them. They're almost like the pay they carry the payloads into the target in the bloodstream. We find that the women were highly toxic with the artificial bisphenol A and other ingredients. And therefore, within the first 8 to 12 weeks of pregnancy with a male child, there's a very good chance that male would grow up to be either almost completely sterile uh, or, as I say, maybe have, a, have some motile sperm. This was all understood 50 years ago. Bisphenol A, for instance, was discovered in the 1890s, and the properties it had against humans, especially males, was known then too. Now it's in all the beer cans, great target males again. They line the cans with it. Uh, there's been many uh, exposés on it now. The CBC in Canada, which is a government-owned television station, it's, it's the BBC, basically, of Canada, did a, a documentary series called the, the, the Disappearing Male. And it goes through all of that in that particular uh, talk with, with proof. Also, when we go back to the writings of Lord Bertrand Russell and uh, Julian Huxley and Aldo Huxley, who were also related to the Darwins, by the way, you'll find that they talked about ways to sterilize the populations in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. But of course, and they even said they would use the needle to create a, a compliance, pliable population, meaning to dumb down the people and also to, to bring down the fertility rates.